watching Legacies. I'm continuing part two of Dress for Warfare. And so if you were watching part one and it was disrupted, we were at the Shield of Faith. And so we're going to continue. So the Shield of Faith, again, stands and it says that I believe everything that I've already professed. I believe that the truth of God holds me up. I believe that the breastplate of righteousness says that I am the righteousness of Christ. I am who God says I am. I believe that um, that the gospel of peace is easily entreated. That is the true a true and loving gospel and it advances that God loves us and that he sent his son to die for us and that we would not just have a life for eternity but that we would have a loving and beautiful life here on earth and so now we have the shield of faith and it's saying that remember warfare is really about having faith that God is who he says he is and he has done what he said it will do and so in that authority we move forward to say we are trusting God we are boldly professing that this shield of faith has has made us capable of continuing in warfare and it quenches the fiery darts of the enemy these things are darts like offense people I work with people all the time who want to be offended they want to believe that someone has something against them they want to be angry and frustrated with people often and so they, they don't have their shield of faith up. they don't believe they don't believe that God has made a way that is better or higher road for us than this word of offense this road of offense and this opportunity and and so when the fiery darts of the enemy come, if we have faith, we, we are able to block that defensively. We're able to defend ourselves against the fiery darts of the enemy that want to tell us that, oh no, this is not real. Oh no, they don't like you. Oh, oh, you're a victim. Oh, it's, it, they're mistreating you. Oh, you're being, you know, harassed. Oh, oh, they, they're not meaning good for you. Oh, nothing's going to work. Those are the fiery darts of the enemy. And faith comes up to block those darts in order to give us victory. And so that's the fiery darts of, those are against the fiery darts of the enemy. And that's the shield of faith. And now we're going on to the um, sword of the spirit. I lost my place here, but I know the, the armor. So the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And this is an offensive weapon. And the, offense, and the offensive weapon of the sword of the spirit is that it helps us to declare the things that God has said, already made. So what we have to realize is that the Bible is prophetic, right? It's telling us what is to come. And so it also tells us the fate of all of our enemies. It tells the demonic forces the fate that, that comes against them. And so we use the scripture to say, no, you are already, you are under God's feet. You've already been destroyed. You've already been completed. This work is done. God has, is who he says he is. And so that sword is our offensive weapon to say, you can't, you won't have any power here. You will be struck down. You will be cut down before you will be victorious against us. And you don't have the place to stand because God has removed your standing, right? He's removed the authority that you are naturally operating in as a, as an angelic being now he has said that he is victorious and so the 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 sword of the spirit which is the word of god can be used to break down all arguments all assumptions all ideas all bad attitudes all offense anything that comes in a spiritual way against us can be broken down by the sword of the spirit which is the word of god Word of God is very powerful and you can use it as such, like a sword, yielding it. And now let's talk about the helmet, um, the helmet, sorry, helmet of salvation. And so the helmet of salvation says this, look at that. We are reminded, right? Our remind, we're reminded of what has already happened for us. We're reminded of that Christ has came to save us and to bring us into this relationship with God. It's interesting because when every time I think about the helmet of salvation, I think about the words that Christ says, let this, I mean, the scripture that says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, right? Is that Christ our was aware and mindful of what God was doing. Salvation makes us be able to be aware of what God has already done. Because every day that we wake up and we are reminded that yes, we indeed, we are saved. Yes, indeed, there has been a way made for us through Christ Jesus that brings us into this place. And so our mind is refreshed and renewed. It's not the mind of the person who's not saved. It's the mind of the person who salvation has already made a way for us. And so we can advance with our thoughts being clear and straightforward, direct 
directed towards what is new uh, and important is that we are now heirs of a new kingdom. We have a new mindset, a new mentality. Like we talked about before when we talked about Paul, forgetting what's behind us is forgetting a whole mentality, is forgetting a whole livelihood. What used to be valuable is no longer valuable. I'm advancing in what is the kingdom in the salvation mindedness, which means my livelihood now is in Christ. And as we declare warfare, what we're really doing is saying who God is, what his word says, who we are because of what his word says and because of who he is and how he plans to continue to execute that plan towards victory. That's what we're doing when we're going into warfare. We are declaring that God is who he says he is. We're taking a humble position under the authority of Christ. We're putting on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the the belt of truth, right? The the shield of faith, the um, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And our whole body is clad with what Christ has already done. See, some people think they're going into warfare and they're doing it on their own. They're doing some of their own new inventions. But really what we're declaring is everything that God has already established. We're we're clothing ourselves in an armor that says, because of what Christ has done, because of what dominions and authority already exist in Christ and his work in us, we have no reason to be afraid. We can advance behind Christ, right? Allowing him to advance first because of what work has already been established. This is what we're girded ourselves in. And so we engage with the garment of praise, right? For the spirit of heaviness. We, we engage the atmosphere and we charge it with praise and honor and glory for a God who has clothed us in armor that is right and just and true. And it can never be defeated no matter the foe. And so we wearing this armor and we're praising God and we're declaring his truths and we're speaking the word and that is our battle and that is warfare. No matter what it looks like, we're declaring and calling out the things that the Holy Spirit is bringing up to us and declaring the truths of God and in that way we advance and in that way we win. So we must be dressed for warfare with the humility that comes with these body, with these pieces of armor, with the humility, with the integrity of what Christ has already done done and what he's established with the character of God and the boldness that he has given us, we advance. I hope you're dressed for warfare. We'll be praying for you. We hope that you're praying for us. Please pray that we have no more disruptions. I'm trying to figure out why all of a sudden calls are starting to break up the, the broadcast, but um, they didn't do that in the past, so it's really peculiar to me. But at the end of the day, it won't stop us from doing what we're called to do. And so I hope the same is true for you. If you know that God is asking you to read, if he's asking you to study, if he's asking you to do the work and to look into these places, or if he's asking you to engage in warfare and you haven't been willing to in the past, and now you you know you need to, then go ahead and move forward. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let anything stop you because the work that God has called us to do is truly important and valuable work and we need to do it. So I'm asking you to continue to pray in as a as a form of warfare continue to praise and worship God but continue also to study and be a part of this active body of Christ that is living and growing. I'll be praying for you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, be blessed.